Welcome to our health and well-being show here on Uxbridge FM. And we are welcoming back Keely Taverner. Hi, Keely. Hey, how are you? Psychotherapist at Key for Change here in Uxbridge. Mm -hmm. And I only just realised you're an author as well. Indeed. Prolific author. Talk about your books later, maybe. Mm Mm-hmm. So, we just realised it is Valentine's Day next week, not long, and it's the time when those that are in relationships go out and spend, I don't know, five, six, seven pounds on a card. It's probably Clinton's busiest day of the year, or the flower shop, you know, flower stall, whatever, mm-hmm. nice bunch of flowers, 30 quid later. But those that aren't in a relationship... What do we do about them? That is the question. They haven't got any roses, haven't got any flowers. What do we do? (laughs) Indeed. So it can, you know, Valentine's Day, if you're single, if you're not in a relationship, can leave people feeling rather inadequate. And I can own that. I know that that was a place where I've been for in the years when I was single, I'd been in a relationship or you know, when I was married, you'd always be guaranteed a really decent present. Um, and when, when I wasn't in a relationship anymore, you know, I'd so, sort of see that material and feel inadequate. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm very good at being honest about how I feel. So it just makes me wonder how do other people feel in terms of it being Valentine's Day, if you're single or even, you know, just broken up from a relationship, especially on the day. We can all, we all know, we were speaking a little bit earlier about consumerism and we can all moan and be like, you know, it's just marketing, capitalism. Mm. But sometimes we may well feel slightly uncomfortable should our partners not choose to present us with that 30, 40, 40 pound uh, bunch of flowers. If they forget. If they if they forget, it's never a good look. If you've had no. to go to the petrol station and get what was available on the forecourt, just peel off the price tag. There you carefully. go. They, or, or the man at the road side of the road selling by the uh, tr- if you're real if you if you if you were really down on your luck. Yeah, it's never a good look, <laughs> you know. But definitely for people who are are not in relationships, it can evoke feelings of inadequacy, and. That's something I'm always curious about in terms of what do you do with that? Mm. So you're not in a relationship. You doubt you'll be getting a card or a gift from anybody. Or sometimes we might be getting gifts or something from someone if it's not appropriate as well. Because we've got to watch out for them people who don't know how to let go. (laughs) Um, uh, Stalkers and, you know, stalkers and so on. And so it's about how can you make yourself, what can you do for yourself to override that feeling of inadequacy? Mm. How can you shed love? Can we still give, even if we're single, to a stranger or a, a neighbour? Well, I think one of the challenges we have um, is that we are fed a very narrow definition of what it what love is. And so often we think of love as being like about intimate relationships. And actually, intimate relationships can be can come with a whole raft of of challenges as as two people from two different worlds come together. Mm -hmm. And so it can be, you know, like what who else could you show love to is one way to think about about that. And things I've done in the past before is I've left Valentine's Day cards on my mum's car and I bought her a rose and I left her. Hopefully she's not watching now. Um, <laughs> she can't quite work a smartphone out anyhow. So um, I've done that as a deck because I love my mum, you know, and yeah. I felt like actually I wanted to indulge in the kind of what was going on at the time. And so I bought and gave that to my mum. And I think I watched her being confused about, oh, who gave that to me? Who did that? And I kind of really liked that. Yeah. I love that. That's a nice way of showing a bit of love. Mm. You've got experience, though, of being a probation officer. Mm-hmm. Valentine's Day in a prison. How would that work? Well, one of the beautiful things about being in prison is um, people still write handwritten letters. Wow. With a vengeance, <laughs> actually, um, and do all sorts of crafty, creative work with their letters as well, whether it be spraying it or um, 
even like coloring in people make it fancy they order in their cards as well off of their um of their canteen list so it's it's almost quite um it's almost like going back in time sometimes yeah um, in prison in terms of some of the things that we still have in place. I think some people still used to record on cassette tape. Yeah, so I don't know if that still happens, but when I was there, it was. So I think there's something quite profound about some of those old traditional ways that have gone, such as even letter writing, mm. you know, handwritten, not a text message, but actually declare, you know, how, you know, that process of sitting there and writing, handwriting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm currently on an on a online course at the moment where I'm having to handwrite in the workbook. And it's a totally different process, <laughs> you know, from typing or just thinking about things in my head. It's a different process. To actually seeing it on a smartphone or a, or a form on the screen. Yeah, most definitely. And, and it's even like, you know, writing poetry, which is another way that someone can express love mm. at this particular time of year. This is a bit of a tangent, but I was chatting to a psychic lady who I'm thinking of having on at some point. It's a bit controversial, maybe, but um, interestingly, she was saying that to get the energy of someone to speak to, she has to have a printed photograph, a physical photograph. She can't do it from mobile phone pictures. There's something mm. different about seeing a printed photograph. So perhaps it's the same with writing physical letters compared to sending texts or WhatsApps yeah. or whatever. Well, I, I think it's a bit like having, it's the Kindle versus the physical book. Yeah. You know, and even wonderful to see in Uxbridge that Waterstones hasn't gone and it's being um, refurbished is wonderful because yeah. someone must be buying the yeah. physical books. Well, there's an old bookshop in, in Windsor Street, Bernard's bookshop. Mm. Goodness, it's about 19 don't know something crazy yeah 70 years or something <laughs> yeah and and sadly Beauville's is going yeah in the high street yeah um so they're 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 there but but you know with the challenges of of we need more we need more arts and crafts adult coloring and all those mindfulness ways that we don't get through our our phones so much i suppose yeah, well, and, and one of the things you, you spoke about me being a writer was that I write in my book, Why Love Hurts, is the importance of auditing our phones. Ah. I really believe if there's anything I could stress more to people, especially if they're suffering with stress and anxiety, or you're in love with someone and they won't commit to you and they play mind games. So this is for the individuals who may have ended up in one-way relationships or in love, fall in love with someone who's got narcissistic tendencies is that actually our phones can be a real source of stress. Yeah. And so auditing our phones can be incredibly helpful. Uh, it's, you know, especially if we, we like them and we love them and they go AWOL on us and then they just turn up. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a block feature for a reason. <laughs> Use yeah. it and abuse it. Yeah, very yeah. true. And I've, in the past, I've used the block feature to protect myself from myself. Mm. So I'm not tempted because sometimes we can find really elaborate excuses like, oh, I'll just check if he knows what time, da, 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 da. You could find, you find really great excuses to get in contact with someone, someone, especially if we know they're not always great for us. Mm. So, you know, auditing our phone, I think is really important, especially if this Valentine's Day, Ladies and gentlemen, if we're secretly hoping that person who won't commit or who kind of, we're not sure if they like us, but they call every so often, you know, there is a benefit to using those features to help ourselves. As well as, I'm a massive fan of coming out of WhatsApp groups. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Muting or whatever. Muting. Deleting. Deleting the whole group. Well, because, because sometimes some... Some WhatsApp groups cause our stress and anxiety. Mm. And sometimes we may have been bu bullied before in the past. And so sometimes if you're ignored in the group or you feel challenged, it can replicate uh, a pain and a hurt mm. from yesteryear. Oh, I see. You know, and sometimes we might be reacting a bit strongly, but like, blimey, I'm really distressed by this group. But often that might be because it's from an unprocessed hurt from yesteryear. Mm. And so I, you know, so... 
this Valentine's Day can be also an opportunity for a bit of a cleanse and a bit of a clean up. You know, I'm a fan of sometimes we have to archive conversations. Sometimes we might have to get rid of photos. Don't delete them because sometimes we can regret that. But sometimes it might be helpful to think about, do I need to take it off my phone so that when I open up my, I know my gallery, I'm not subjected to memories, mm. you know, because if you're anything like me, and I think I'm, I'm, I'm fairly representative of most humans, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes we reminisce on those memories <laughs> and we, we take a, 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 a whittle and a waddle down memory lane. I don't think I have your rapping skills there. Ah. If I'm an average human. Ah, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Are you seeing any any trends since maybe Christmas? Um, clients that you're seeing as a psychotherapist at Key for Change? Are you seeing um, young people, um, old people? Is there a trend? Is there a subject that they're all coming to you with the, pro the same problem? I think I think one challenge that is showing itself up more and more, and this affects people across the board, is uh, a kind of friends with benefit backslash hookup culture okay yeah so no no commitment it's just uh as and when ad hoc yeah yeah like a pay-as-you-go phone do you remember those i like that yeah yeah no contract <laughs> no obligation yes. yeah so <laughs> there's, there's definitely a get out of free um valentine's there's there's you're not going to get any declarations of love and care and affection right interesting yeah and, and i think with the a culture that slightly promotes that um where these terms have become part of everyday language i think it's very difficult if you're not that way inclined mm. i'm not a fan of hookups no um especially if you want to invest in a relationship you want to build and grow then it can be quite against your own grain and if you're not careful if you're not able to hold your own boundary you end up slipping into relationships that just you'll know in yourself that that's not really for you. Mm. But because that might be what the other partner is bringing, that actually, why don't we just keep it as a loose arrangement? Sometimes if you're not careful, you can end up falling into these situations. So we wouldn't necessarily bring them home for Sunday lunch with mum, with some Yorkshire puddings. No. Um, that would be a bad idea. Well, they wouldn't probably wouldn't want to come to your house. They're not Yorkshire puddings? Uh, Aunt Bess? Maybe homemade. They're not. They're not diggity down with um, that kind of meet the family. No, it's not about that. It's either about you know venues where you might be intimate, so there might be physical intimacy, mm. um, but you're not going to get the additional. It's a kind of one dimensional relationship. Yeah, and I think that can be really tricky if. if that's not what you're up for or you feel that that's what you're often being presented with. Mm. Like, why do I keep meeting guys who don't want to commit? Mm. Can be baffling, but, you know, it's important that you hold firm on what you want for yourself. So they're like, what's the end goal you want? Do you want to be in a committed relationship? And and so that we make sure we take steps in alignment with what we want for ourselves. If won't commit, Fred is back on our line and maybe the sex is great. We need to have a word about that. <laughs> we need to have a word about that and if you go to my instagram page ah uh, uh, yes i need to chat about your headlines mm, <laughs> indeed what's the one today the big dick the, the big, big d the, sorry oh easy now <laughs> easy yes the big d it's really important to have a conversation about that because yeah. sex is a powerful experience and if you're not careful can um, have great ramifications on your mental health and well-being. Mm. You know, not just because of, you know, STDs, because we know that's an whole other dynamic, but in terms of who we allow into our world and what are our vices. Yeah. You know, so my, uh, my statement, my post about Big D's, which is al it always gets engagement, is encouraging us to think about what are our hooks. So you're using these um, attention-grabbing headlines, but actually there is some useful content below that, some intelligent content all the time. All the time. <laughs> There's always a method to my madness, yes. you know, and, and when you dig down uh, deeper, you'll see that. But often, as, as you know, you know, if I would have put, um, I know, 
one side, three signs you're in an unhealthy relationship, it doesn't always have no. the same gravitas. Whereas with something like saying big D's because of the tabooness of it all, it means that people are inspired, I guess, to react. And I can only say that because people do, yeah. you know, they do react. And sometimes, you know, they're open to sharing what, what their experiences are. Yeah. And so, so I always find that really interesting in terms of, you know, even just speaking with my assistant would be like, well, Key, if you talk more about these topics, clearly you're going to get more engagement. But I can't just be an, you know, I can't be just a slave to engagement. No. You know. You just write about Love Island all day. Oh, dear. Yeah. Well, I've tried. My sister is always telling me to watch it so that I can comment and, and share my thoughts. I just, I just struggle with, I just, I just struggle with that kind of base I don't know. Maybe it's me. I just, you know, I'm very much a guardian of 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 my mind. Yeah. I have to be very careful about what I allow in, because what we allow into our mind of influences us so much. Mm. So, I did watch one one episode with my daughter, and I could feel myself raging. <laughs> so I thought, clearly, this is probably not not for me. Not for me. I don't think my teeth are quite there with the old um, up to Love Island standards. Oh, are they all got to be white? White, definitely all oh, in line. Yeah. Oh, oh, bless. Yeah. Well, that in itself is the curse of perfectionism, and we know that that is incredibly damaging yeah. for humans. It's something that comes up so much in the therapy room because um, you know sometimes for employers, perfectionism is great because they get someone who goes above and beyond. But what it also does is, is, is it often means that there's a very harsh inner critic inside. Mm which means you often berate yourself, nothing's ever good enough. And you're often, you say incredibly awful things to yourself that you would never say to an, another human being on the street. Yeah. You know, so. Do you get any um, therapy clients from sort of corporate backgrounds who have um, interesting office clashes or, or relationships? I think, I think... I think working in prison was a very interesting place to oh, work. Oh, yeah, interesting would be the word, yeah. Profoundly interesting. <laughs> um, and as someone who was studying psychology at the time, because I was, I was also, when I was there with my placement from Brunel, um, hashtag I am Brunel, <laughs> um, the um, staff members were arrested for inappropriate relations. Wow. Yeah, which always seemed to, which always makes big gossip news but I, I always was interested in, in the viewpoint of what was going on for that individual. Mm. Like risk. Why would someone risk, take that level of risk? Mm. Um, and so I was always interested from a psychological viewpoint, which I don't think the prison always were. They were more interested in sort of hanging that person out to dry and making them like, this is what will happen to you if yeah. you do this. But there was a culture of it happening. So as, a, as a, someone who was interested in psychology, I was very much interested in... Um, what makes women well often it was women in the prison because i worked in a male prison that was the dynamic mm. that i was exposed to why would women make a choice to go down that route mm. and what i noticed was there was something about vulnerability sometimes people having home lives where they weren't happy and then the challenge is you come into the prison men notice you a lot they notice everything about you and sometimes you can get attention that you wouldn't el get elsewhere and also, you know, you know, you may not get that much attention on the streets, but hey ho, on yeah. the wings, <laughs> we're all superstars, ladies. We're all superstars. We're all desirable. And if you're not grounded about that, and it's a conversation that never happens, if you're not grounded with yourself about that, things can start to go to your head, mm. and then there, there will be subtle changes that we should pay attention to. So, thankfully, I was training as a psychotherapist, and I was. I was able to ask questions of, to my supervisors away from that organization. So yeah, that was very helpful in terms of, you know, forbidden fruit. And so even now, you know, in terms of affairs, there is something about forbidden fruit that can fuel things like mm. affairs, Yeah, you know, and make a person incredibly desirable. It's a bit like nicking a chip off someone's plate. <laughs> it always tastes better. Their chip tastes better than yours. Their chip tastes better than yours. The forbiddenness, it's not allowed. Yeah. And that in itself can be quite a spike in terms of desire. 
And it's really important to get to know that. Because sometimes what will happen is, you know, people have this ambition that should we leave or when you come out, we're going to be happy together and live together happy ever after. It doesn't happen. No. The intensity was because of the forbidden relationship. Mm. Yeah. Do you want to check your phone for any questions? And then we can tell us about your workshop that's happening. Mm. Um, you've got a workshop happening on the 15th of February. Feel loved. Indeed. Get the love that you deserve. Um, that's a bargain price of £69 per person for the whole day. Uh, it'll bring you clarity and understanding when it comes to love. Don't give up hope. So that's um, Queensgate Gardens in South Kensington on the old website, keyforchange.com. And further down here, look, Keely Speaks. Can mm. have a look at your YouTube channel. Ah, <laughs> well done. And scrolling down, there's all the people that work at Keeper Change, the team. Mm. Yeah, so we have a variety of practitioners who are helping us to help people in a whole raft of different ways. We have a private psychiatrist, which is also really helpful for people who don't always want to go through their, their doctors for whatever reason yeah. um, and may need a psychiatric uh, assessment. Um, so that that seems to be a really popular service actually and um, mm. people for various reasons not wanting to go for their gp because they want that privacy or because they don't want a record should yeah. they have to go for a job and they do a medical test um so it's just really interesting isn't it how the stick i mean it's an example of the stigma of, of, of mental health mm. that actually people choose to invest in a different way so that is kept at bay if you go to your GP with uh, mental health mental health issues, what are the normal routes? Are they going to prescribe medication for that, or send you? Would they send you to a um, person like yourself as a first? I think choice. I think something I've noticed is the importance of class in terms of when you're dealing with professionals. Yeah, and how you're able to put yourself across that does actually have an influence on outcomes in terms of treatment. Oh, right. Some people might think I'm wrong, but hey, I, I use, you know, I'm a grassroots girl and I educated myself in my adult years. And I think that before when I used to go to my GP, whatever my GP said, I'd be like, OK, fine, I'll take the tablets. Mm. But the more I became, the more I educated myself was the more I was a little bit more like, are there any, is there another way to deal with that? Or um, I'd start, I'd start to learn about alternative treatments which I was amazed by. I mean, but I always did have an auntie who had, an, um, who had a naturopath. And I never really, she was always our rich, posh auntie anyhow. <laughs> so I didn't really get it. She always used Kingfisher toothpaste. Yeah. Do you know about that? Kingfisher toothpaste. Do you know it? I don't think so. Oh, it's this natural one that always, it wasn't Colgate. I didn't get it. I get it now. So it's this fluoride free. Uh -huh. So for people who know, they know. And so I think, it also, I think, it, it, you know, I think class has an impact. And I think it's also about how much do you kind of go in knowing as well? Do you have a sort of general gist? Mm. Um, people who come to me have usually been to their GP already. And often they don't feel comfortable going on medication. They know, yes, they're depressed or they're anxious. But they want to try to understand. They know something's gone on in their life. They usually know. They've not dealt with it. And so they're usually curious about wanting to talk through whatever it is that's happened mm. or just to talk about what's happened. And then that sometimes leads us down a road where other, other tricky things become, they become aware and then they're like, oh, oh, and I'm very good at helping make people make sense of whatever's happened to them mm. so that they understand that's why I do that. Yeah, You know, the challenge is the fear. I think often your GP hopefully they sh it depends on your boroughs as well i know we have a uh, an iap service in this borough iap iap uh improving access to psychological therapies okay yep so um i believe that's free and i'm not sure about what the waiting list is mm. um but so so that can be helpful as a kind of as interventions for people um and yes sometimes it is medication um and you know my my encouragement to anyone is to make sure that there is a, a treatment plan and that you're not just left on medication. But at the same time, and I talk about this in the Feel Loved workshop, it's also about, you know, you could be medicated, but if you've still got big D bozo, yeah. 
calling your phone it's not good it's not good for you and the next thing you know you'd be like doc i need an, i need you to up the dose but or you've on not your phone but you haven't even audited your phone <laughs> Like sister, you've got to notice what triggers you on your phone. But but I tell you, like what I have noticed, and I did um, on my website, I do a free resource called WhatsApp Anxiety, is things like leaving a group, unfollowing someone, defriending someone really creates a lot of stress for people. And I think it is helpful that you can, on Instagram, you can mute stories and you can mute posts. Yeah. So that as far as that person's concerned, you're still following them. Ah. Uh, you see? Cunning. But for that, I think it's very helpful for people's well-being because they don't have to worry that Margaret's noticed I've unfollowed her. <laughs> and then Margaret's going to inbox me and be like, why have you unfollowed me? You know, and it's going to kick off. Because if you don't do conflict, now you've got Margaret on your hands. Oh, not Margaret. Moany Margaret. You know, if I was a GP, I'd probably just prescribe a Nokia 6110 for everybody. And then you can play snake to your heart's content. Oh, my gosh. Uh, but you can't do WhatsApp, I'm afraid. That's not a bad thing, though, is it? You can text. And then you could spend a pound sending photos. You'd soon sort out your photos, wouldn't you? <laughs> You'd soon stop, wouldn't you? My mum would soon stop, wouldn't she? Sending me those ones under her chin. Oh, dear. Yeah. Bless her. Not my mangle it. <laughs> Plus, your battery would last for a week. It would. Remember those days? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Most definitely. Bring back the days. Right. On, on Amazon, guess what I found on Amazon? Look, these are your books. Yay. Why Love Hurts and Help, I'm Dating a Narcissist. Mm. I'm not exactly sure what a narcissist is, but um, oh, I'm going to look it up afterwards. Oh, uh, you've not been subjected it's to one. one of those spelling spelling words. Good for a spelling test, I think. Mm. Yeah. C double S single S. Narcissists is just ballpoint, incredibly self oriented people. Everything is about them. Ah, right. And they need people worshippers. Yeah. yeah. Does it come from the Greek word with the, I forget who he was, looking into the lake, looking at his own reflection? You did I Latin. I might be way off here. You did Latin. No, but at the back of my mind, something's triggering that. Yeah, he did. He fell in love with his own reflection. Uh -oh. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going mad. No. And speaking of going mad, if you are in love with a narcissist, <laughs> you will feel like you are going mad. Okay. Yeah. Because their ambition is to keep you worshipping them and you'll do so at your own expense. Also on the website, in the resources section, I found the, uh, the WhatsApp anxiety, mm -hmm. 15 tips to help you keep your sanity. Anything else on there we should know about? Well, for the month of February, the top one is about five reasons why you care when they don't care about you. And that's just five of the top reasons that come up time and time again about why we care for people that don't care for us. So this is really important for people. I think my content is really helpful for people who are sensitive souls and empaths. So people who are highly sensitive, caring, kind, often helping professionals. It's really helpful to get us to get our head around why we often give so much and get little in return. <laughs> okay, that's great. Mm. Well, you're here in, um, in Beasley's yard Indeed running Key for Change, uh, around the corner, in fact. And um, keyforchange.com is the website. Anything else we need to add? Don't forget, guys, Friday 14th, Valentine's Day. Indeed. Don't be going to the garage on the evening of Valentine's Day. And, and again, if you aren't in an intimate relationship, I'd encourage you to think about who can you show love to, who is in your circle, who sometimes we forget, we neglect, sometimes we overlook. Like, who can you show some love to in your own unique way? Who can you show love to? Mm. And don't forget, you can also send an anonymous card in the office as well for a little bit of fun <laughs> and laughter. Just put the question mark and put it in the post and see see uh, what that does for the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm off to read your post, the, B, the big D. Ah. Thanks for coming in, Keely. <laughs> Someone's got to keep it real. Yeah, we'll see you again soon. Maybe some wrapping next time. Some bars. Yeah, nice one. Cheers. Toodaloo. <laughs>